So, with that said, uh, let's just very quickly, because honestly, I don't even remember much from the show. SmackDown. Oh, really? Because I actually, I actually remember quite a bit from SmackDown. Uh, oh, namely, the New things. Day debuted. Yes, that was the biggest thing that stood out to me. The New Day did debut, and if you listen to the uh, Raw review, I, I think prior to this, you know, last week, I believe it was, we talked about what we feared the New Day might be. And we were right. And we were right. They did materialize. However, you know what? I got to say, Kingston, Biggie, and Xavier look like they're having a great time with it. Yeah. And they are fun to watch, I have to confess. It may be a bit over the top, but as far as, like, in ring work, yeah. they're a fun team to watch come together. Yep. So, I think yeah. that's – honestly, I think that my biggest problem with them is that I want so badly to hate them because of how ridiculously stereotypical this gimmick is, but I can't because they're just so fun and good together. Exactly. Uh, so they got the win. I think it was against Heath Slater and, and two other guys. Right? I really just can't. It, it was uh, Heath Slater and then Curtis Axel and Titus O'Neil. It was Slater, Gator, and Curtis Axel. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I do remember now. Now it's starting to come back to me a little bit. Dolph Ziggler did get Intercontinental Championship rematch against Luke Harper. Uh, they had more interaction on Raw, which we'll get to in a little bit. But uh, that, was, that was a fun match. Ended in a DQ, though, after uh, Harper. Or no, it ended in a countout this time. Ziggler won by countout. I'm thinking of, uh, of another match they had. And, yeah, Ziggler, uh, Harper tried to assault him afterwards, but he caught him with the zigzag. So Ziggler stood tall on this show. Great to see that they're pushing Ziggler aggressively and as a guy that, you know, can really handle himself. And, I mean, yeah, it's that, uh, that diehard kind of attitude, you know, never say die, but still can hold his own. So that was nice. I feel um, like if you include tonight's Raw, I feel like this is now four shows, in, including the pay-per-view as well, four shows in a row where we've seen baby faces standing tall to close the show. Yeah. They've, they've really turned the tide now that the authority has been ousted. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Ashton, since you said you remembered the show quite a bit. Wasn't this also the SmackDown where we got a Miz TV segment? Uh, Miz TV with, uh, yeah, with, with it was Big supposed show. to be with Big Show, but Brian also came out talking about how he was the general manager tonight and set up the, uh, the Luke Harper and Rusev matches. Yeah, that's right, because Rusev had his battle royal as well. That's right. Yep, wow. exactly. That was yeah. that was one of the two things that I really wanted to talk about was Rusev's battle royal, and then the other thing I'll get to after we talk about this. Yeah, how great did Rusev look in that battle royal? Yeah, he uh, he was really quite dominant. The so, most the most prominent thing to me is that Tyson Kidd made it to the top four. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Tyson's still getting that push, baby. It's great to see win or lose. The idea that he's getting. These, uh, these little rubs here and there just shows the NXT and just him developing this personality that he has has really paid off. I realized today that I was actually looking most forward to Tyson Kidd tonight, and I was just like, oh, well, I hope that he still is getting enough of a push that he's still on tonight because I've really been enjoying his work. You and me both, my friend. You and, and then I both. saw that friggin' tweet that was like, oh, look, there's this five-team gauntlet match, and one of the teams was Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. And I just, yeah, I knew you would freak out about that, and I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> Seems like a technical dream team, too. I hope they stick together. I think yeah. it's a good thing for both the guys. The new kings of wrestling. Yeah, really. Um, Not much to say outside of that in the Battle Royal. I mean, Cesaro had a... Pretty nice performance, but uh, he he did lose, so his battle royal undefeated streak is over. Uh, and, and yeah, no, nothing really. Wait a minute, didn't he get eliminated from a battle royal by Heath Slater back in like August? You know what? I think you're right about that. Yeah, so, so not necessarily what? undefeated streak, but I guess a streak, so to speak. Because uh, he, he won the WrestleMania under the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Then he won that Battle Royal to be inter, uh, number one contender of the Intercontinental title. So he had a little streak going. So no. I guess that's more appropriate to say. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it kind of ended a while ago. But, yeah, we'll go with it. Um, the other thing I actually wanted to talk about was apparently we had a segment on this where uh, – and you, you saw it, but you didn't know this. Nikki Bella cut a promo on AJ, and apparently, like – two-thirds of this promo was cut out. So all we saw was like one-third that the WWE thought was okay to air. Yeah, I, I read about that, and I think uh, somewhere it got released a full transcript of the promo. Yeah, she's basically she cut a full-on babyface promo. Like, she opened with something like, I'm not going to use insults or, or 
lower myself to using some of the phrases that AJ used because I actually care about the kids that are in the crowd. I was like, do you realize that first of all, you're the heel and second of all, what you're wearing uh, on the first count, because I'm not even touching that second count there, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, she is the heel here. I just think, you know, I mean, that makes me wonder what AJ's relationships with the other women are like backstage. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that we've already known for a while that the Bellas were super salty towards AJ for the most part, because she did that uh, press conference at the one Comic Con, I think it was either this year or towards the end of the year last year, where it got brought up about her whole pipe bombshell promo and how that was actually supposed to lead to her cutting promos on total divas every week and the bellas got that nixed because they took it personally because they apparently couldn't separate real life from kayfabe yeah so nikki bella definitely taking liberties with the microphone yeah um which is fine you know for me i you know especially after our and the, to me there are life. two two really hilarious parts about this beyond what we've already talked about first of all the fact that she insists on using the term fearless is absolutely hilarious to me like does she really think that she's gonna get fearless over like it's a thing like i mean if i was hubbies with the top guy in the company i'd probably be fearless too but that doesn't necessarily mean you need to go parading around acting like it's your slogan right and and second of all there was a second of all i'm trying to remember but oh she no what was it I don't remember what the second of all was. I'm sure I'll think of it in five minutes and then talk about it completely out of context. But just this, this whole thing, uh, apparently Nikki Bella is trying to be a baby face, even though she's very clearly the heel in this and cutting this ridiculous, like she thought it was a pipe. Oh, the second thing is this promo was almost completely lifted from a Facebook status that she had earlier this month. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like I saw somebody link to it and it was almost, it was, I won't say it was almost word for word, but it was pretty much the exact same message, just reworded. Wow. And it even included the line through these fearless eyes. (laughs) Well, you know, you know, again, I I don't mind her taking liberties with the microphone, but, but keep it in the general direction that the audience is familiar with that being that you are the heel. You know, that AJ is... Well, and that's face. why they cut, because they cut out all the babyface stuff. They cut out the, I care about the kids in the audience. They cut out that kind of stuff. At one point, she said something like, uh, AJ, the truth about you is that you... Uh, it was something about how she gets uptight or nervous or something about anybody that isn't like her. I, I don't even know, man. And the, the, I think the... Oh, oh well, well, Ashton, Ashton, I, uh, not to cut you off, bro, but I have the transcript right here. Okay, that's uh, awesome. So I, I, can, uh, I can tell you what you're probably referring to. She says, quote, You want to know why you don't have any friends? It's because you're so threatened by anyone who doesn't right. like you. Uh, it's not... It's Yeah, see, that was a, a misquote. And that's... I actually saw a status earlier today from somebody talking about how dirt sheets are so pathetic that they just copy and paste links are uh, full reports from other dirt sheets without fixing any of the mistakes and the mistake there is it's not people who anybody who isn't like you it's or not anybody who doesn't like you it's anybody who isn't like you meaning like people that aren't like you right and and the other thing it just uh, kind of all because it all kind of ties in i think to the thing you were trying to reference she says the biggest difference between you and me is that i don't have to go tell everyone referencing that she says that she's worked harder uh so they like me so she doesn't and, have to go uh, yeah. about her hard work and it really, yeah, like, she doesn't have to preach about her hard work, but she's doing it right now, so screw yourself. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, nothing more you can really say than that. I, personally, after this promo and just everything else, I really am believing that AJ may be on her way out. I wasn't putting any stock into those rumors. Now I'm slowly starting to. Uh, so I don't, it, dude, I don't know, dude. After tonight's Raw, I'm kind of stopping buying into the rumors. Yeah, that is true, and we'll get to that later. Because the big rumor was that she was leaving after Survivor Series, and I totally could have bought her leaving after Raw because of the way that they would have sent her out on that. But then she showed up on SmackDown and got the upper hand, and then she showed up tonight and pinned the Divas Champion. I don't think AJ's going anywhere. Probably not, but we'll have to wait and see. I'll be very intrigued about TLC Fallout. 
because, you know, with Punk doing this interview and AJ no longer being Divas Champion and this uh, program, even though it did get edited, you can tell there's that, that personal tension there. I mean, who's to say how this is all going to resolve itself? But, you know, that said, was there anything else we wanted to cover on SmackDown? Uh, no, I don't think so. 